John, talk to us about the significance of this launch in particular. Well, yes, aside from uh, the launch of a military satellite for uh, the Republic of Korea, this has, as you mentioned, um, demonstrated SpaceX's uh, turnaround time of under 60 days. The previous record of 54 days was actually held by the NASA program for their Atlantis shuttle. So this is, you know, five days under that 54 54 day record. So it's a new record, and it uh, it also demonstrates that continued reuse of the Falcon 9 Block 5 vehicles. This is a workhorse for SpaceX, and I would say a cash cow for the company. Now we're going to be following this for the next several minutes, and then we'll be also be covering the landing of the first stage on the SpaceX drone ship. That's another uh, critical step in this particular mission. Um, Sean, it's fun to go a little back in time and look at the history of the space program. But as I understand it, the last time a space shuttle launched again, uh, this close together was back uh, to the Atlantis days in 1985, just before the Challenger disaster. So even if, as you look at this over several decades, this particular launch is quite uh, significant. Yes, it, it certainly is, because SpaceX, I mean, we had previously uh, planned to cover the additional Starlink launches with Black Sky. Um, you know, SpaceX has done a dozen launch. Uh, 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 this is the, the 12th launch for 2020. Many of these launches have been focused on the on the Starlink constellations, and recovery is, is key for one of the other launches that's coming up. It's going to be the fifth flight of one of the uh, Block 5 vehicles. As you mentioned, this is the, the second flight of the Block 5 vehicle, and there we've just seen the separation of uh, the booster stage from the, uh, from the second stage vehicle, and the booster stage is going to return on um, the uh, Just Read the Instructions uh, robotic tugboat. In addition to returning the, the, uh, the booster stage, SpaceX is planning on recovering the fairing which, uh, you know, they've got two ships out at sea, Mystery and Mischief. And, uh, um, you know, it's an important for cost recovery uh, in order to keep uh, the internal costs for launch, uh, for launch down for, uh, for SpaceX. All right. So as you mentioned, the first and second stages have officially separated. We're going to be following the landing of that first stage. And as you say, we're also uh, going to be following the recovery of the second stage, uh, this is all going to be happening in a matter of minutes. What exactly is this satellite going to be doing in space? We know that uh, there's only one, I believe, South Korean military satellite in space as it stands. So uh, this is potentially a huge new addition to their arsenal. Yes. You know, uh, South Korea has about a 25-year history of various civilian satellites. Um, this mission, uh, the uh, ANASYS-2, uh, you know, uh, developed, uh, built by uh, Airbus under contract to Lockheed, is solely a, uh, a military, uh, military communication satellite. Uh, KoreaSat-5 was a combination of both civilian and defense communications. But with this, um, you know, it establishes a secure uh, communication channel for uh, the, the uh, Korean Department of Defense, and uh, you know these things typically operated at fre operated frequencies from three to 30, uh, 30 gigahertz. So the technology is is well defined, but it is uh, the first dedicated um, uh, defense satellite for the Republic of Korea. Now I can't help but mention that today is also the fifty first anniversary of the moon landing of the Apollo 11, and here we are making history yet again. Talk to us a little bit about the technology, because Elon Musk's whole mission has been to make uh, space technology more affordable, more achievable, uh, especially for the United States. As uh, SpaceX and Elon Musk uh, can continue to prove now over and over again, and they've had uh, quite a few launches so far this year, that they can do this successfully. What does that mean for our ability to continue to explore the final frontier? Well, you know, this, uh, uh, this, re this really means bringing down the, co the launch costs. Um, especially for SpaceX. I mean, SpaceX has this incredible vehicle, uh, the Block, uh, the Falcon 9 Block 5, 
Uh, it's intended to re- use, you know, close to a dozen times uh, before an individual vehicle uh, is retired. Uh, SpaceX has mastered this landing sequence that we're seeing. We have uh, titanium guide fins that have been deployed on the first stage. And as the second stage uh, burns to orbit, um, the uh, first stage is making its way to a recovery platform out, out in the Atlantic. SpaceX and Blue Origin are both under contract uh, to return uh, U.S. astronauts, perhaps the first female uh, astronaut to land on the moon, uh, hopefully within the next uh, within the next decade, and we may see a resurgence of lunar ac- lunar activity, of course, led by NASA with you know a whole host of international uh, international participants. So I think from the space sector, it's extremely exciting to see. Uh, a resurgence in lunar activity, you know, perhaps over the next 10 to 20 years, and then pretty clearly that we're, uh, Mars is in the crosshairs for the 21st century. We've already had several uh, robotic rovers uh, on Mars. Um, China landed on the moon in 2013. Could they be back? Could they be, uh, do their first Mars landing in, um, uh, you know, sometime this decade? And, uh, you know, Elon Musk and, uh, you know, all of uh, all of his engineers at SpaceX are focused on, you know, building a reusable vehicle uh, to get to Mars. So reuse is 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 essential. Reuse is part of the aviation industry. And now it's going to be part of the aerospace sector. Now, we are standing by for that first stage to land any minute now. Typically, that happens about nine minutes into launch. We're about uh, seven minutes and 36 seconds now, according to uh, the NASA countdown clock, into launch. That first stage will be landing on the, quote-unquote, just read the instructions drone platform provided by SpaceX. Sean, what are we looking for when it comes to a successful landing of the first stage? Well, you know, SpaceX, if you go to YouTube, you can see all of the unsuccessful landings that they've, uh, that they've had. And clearly, uh, you know, the first stage coming down and staying put on that, uh, staying put on that platform. From, uh, from the landing, it's then, uh, you know, one day tug back into port. And then the SpaceX engineers will refurbish the vehicle for its, uh, for its next flight. I think what we're seeing right now, it's pretty much at uh, eight and a half minutes where that uh, first stage comes down. And, you know, it's phenomenal to see both this for the Falcon 9. There it is. It's just landed. But it's even more phenomenal to see this when they launch the Falcon Heavy because that's essentially three stages uh, all tied together uh, during the launch, and they all come back separately. It's just, I would say, an engineering thing of beauty to behold.